Hi guys, it's Chico here again with the next in the playlist where I'm looking at the lessons learned from the new GCSE economics specification. So that's the 9 to 1 course and this is of course for the OCR specification. So I'm going to cover two things today. I'm going to cover what is meant by state, so the command word state in the new exam uh, nomenclature as it were. And then I'm also going to cover what is meant by analyze and what you're expected to do for an analyze question. Answers quite difficult to come by on the analyze uh, question. Not so much for the state question. So let's get straight to it. Now, by state, all we mean is define, really. So state what is meant by demand. Then you just trot out demand first, the amount of good or service that consumers are willing and able to buy at a given price over a given period of time. Hopefully you've learned that and you know it off by heart, parrot fashion. So state is always just define. And that's really what we would probably have been used to on the on the old the legacy specification. And now we're referring to that simply by using that word state rather than define. So that's fairly straightforward, usually a two mark question and nothing complicated about that. Okay, what's a little bit more complicated and what carries a higher tariff, excuse me, mark are the questions which begin either with the command word analyze and as soon as you see the word analyze obviously you know that you're working at quite a high assessment objective so you've got your knowledge and understanding your application and then we're into the analysis. So we're climbing the ladder in terms of what you're expected to do and your, uh, your level of understanding, I suppose, in that respect. So it might either start with the word analyze or it might say and it might state specifically using a diagram analyze. Now, having looked through the examiner's report, it would appear that regardless of whether or not the question started with analyze or using a diagram analyze, candidates who always included a diagram tended to do better. Now my advice has always been for years and years and years, when you see the word analyze, immediately think diagram. And the reason that I say that is because as soon as you start to draw a diagram and then you then start to write about it and describe it, well, as you describe what's going on in the diagram, you are then carrying out some sophisticated analysis. So let's just have a look at that by way of a fairly straightforward labour market diagram where the demand curve is shifted to the left, uh, D1 to D2. <clears throat> so as soon as you start in your answer booklet, your script, to explain that demand has shifted to the left because, and there are various reasons that that might be, so it might be reduced demand for the product, let's say, so there's less labour demanded, so demand shifts to the left, and then you start to tie that in with all of these connective words, and you're using sophisticated quote-unquote chains of reasoning, which is a, a phrase that the exam board likes to, to use often, so demand shifts to the left as a consequence the wage rate in this particular labour market falls, the quantity of labour supplied and demanded is reducing, and once you start to use these phrases, you are then performing quite sophisticated analysis. And therefore my advice would always be, whether or not it says using a diagram or simply analyse, always try and put a diagram in. If there's no room for a diagram, just draw one anyway, or go to the spare pages at the back of the answer booklet and draw one there. And that's the way to get around that. But always, my advice, my best advice is always to include a diagram. Now, I would also suggest to you, and I really only say this having read the examiner's reports, is to always, you know, this whole notion of putting into context is important, but do that on the diagrams too. So, for example, on the June 2019 papers, there was some type of reference to do with the elasticity of, I can't remember which curve it was, supplier demand. And so incorporate that into your answer. So if the case study said, this, let's just say for example, the supply of labour was very inelastic, then in your diagram, try and keep it in context and draw a nice inelastic supply curve like so. 
and then carry out your analysis from that point. And a final point to say, and this is a kind of extension here, um, in order to get the, the six marks out of six, when, it, when you've done all of that, and you've done all of your analysis, then ask yourself how, and what do I mean by that? I mean, how might this impact economic agents, I suppose is the best way to put it. Or how might it impact um, some of the stakeholders who are referenced within the case study material? So ask yourself that. And then once you've asked yourself it, and you've got an answer in your head, put that answer on paper. So, you know, you might say to yourselves, well, how, how might this affect uh, shops in the local community, for example? And then you could say, well, if people have less wages, maybe they'll have to buy a smaller basket of goods, so demand in the local bakers and butchers and fruit shop might fall, and so that might have an overall depressing nature um, and contractionary nature uh, on the local area, the local community. So remember, your, you know, your economic agents, the government, the consumer, the firm, maybe the foreign sector possibly, but those are your economic agents. Or if you, you're given some sort of context by way of uh, which to analyze this, then make sure that you say, well, how will this impact the key stakeholder that is referenced in the, in the case study material? Okay, ladies and gents, that's it for today, and I'll see you again next time with the next in the series of Lessons Learned. Bye for now.